Hey, what's up everybody? This is Marin. Welcome back to our course on Beginning Realm on iOS. In this part of the course, you're going to learn how to define classes that you can use in your app and at the same time store their data in a Realm file on disk. And so, let's get started. This is how your project is going to look like once you have finished the video tutorial. Well, it doesn't really do so much because in this video, we're only going to be defining new classes. But this is how the UI is looking like in your starter project. With Realm, you don't really need to use a tool or some kind of software to define what kind of objects you want to be storing on disk, what kind of objects can be persisted. You actually just create the classes in your code and you make those classes in your head from Realm's base class called object. And that already tells Realm enough so it knows what kind of structure to create on disk uh, in, in your file so that you can store your data in there. So your code is the only source of truth about your database schema. And so it's very easy. Looking at the class on the current slide, you see that inheriting from object already adds the ability to be persisted on disk and read back transparently. So you don't need to add any methods to do that. You focus on adding the data properties that you want to be persisted in your model classes. You can provide default values for your properties for newly created objects to have. But you can also, um, as you can see in the code on the slide, have optional properties, which will be by default nil. And all, it just works. Of course, you can't persist just any property type. Let's have a look at what property types you can actually persist in your object classes. You can persist primitive types like bool, int, float, and double. And if you provide a default value, you just define those properties as dynamic and Realm takes care uh, to persist the data automatically. If you want to have optional primitive types in your model class, you have to use the Realm provided Realm optional type to make this work. Now you can persist further data types like string, date, and data. And since those are objects, you just need to declare them dynamic to get them working and Realm will do all the heavy lifting for you. Finally, you can have properties which are other Realm objects or lists of other Realm objects. And Realm will automatically persist and maintain those relationships on disk for you. Your model classes can provide some meta information to Realm. For example, you can override the primary key method to specify which class property is the primary unique key to identify objects. Override indexed properties to specify additional properties that need to be indexed for faster searches. And finally, you can override the ignored properties tell Realm that certain properties in your class don't need to be persisted on disk. And so you might be implementing some custom logic in your class or you can do pretty much whatever you want with your class. So uh, some methods and some properties might not be related to persisting on disk or Realm at all. Once you install the CocoaProt dependencies to this course's project, you can open the workspace, the newly generated workspace by CocoaBots and then run the project because it's already compiling, it's already running. There's actually a lot of things happening inside. All the code that does not directly have to do with Realm is already in. And so you will see that the project app has three separate tabs. The first one being messages. Here's where the messages that your app will fetch from the internet, quote unquote. And uh, we'll show here in a, in a feed list. The second tab is the favorites tab where the messages that the user favorites will show up. And the third one is profile, where the user can see how many messages they've sent. And we have this adorable picture in here. It comes from internet API, a free API called Adorable Avatars. It's a really cute API to use when you're prototyping apps, just to have some profile photos in the project. Okay, but in this video, we're going to focus on just quote unquote, defining realm classes for your database schema. And so for this project, we're gonna need two classes. Uh, you can unfold the chatter folder and then models folder. You will see two classes there, message and user. This will be the data objects that we're gonna store in Realm. They're empty, you can have a look inside. Here's message, which is importing foundation, Realm Swift and defining a new class inheriting from object and same in user.swift. Now, in this video, we're going to add some properties in here and discuss a little bit how it's going to work. So first of all, open user.swift. And for our user object, we're going to add 
two properties, much like we discussed in the slides. One is going to be called name and it's going to be a string property. And one is going to be called sent. And this is going to be the amount of messages that the user has sent through the app, just a counter basically. Now let's add those. Now I'm using Swift's uh, type inference system. This property has a default value of an empty string, therefore it's a string. Uh, you might explicitly annotate this if you want, like so. However, you don't really need to do that if you don't explicitly want to do this. And the second one is in, by default, an int variable and the default value is a zero. So whenever your app creates a new user object, name will be an empty string, send will be equals to zero. And then you can start modifying that uh, and, and persist those values on disk. Okay, so since those are the dynamic values that you're not explicitly ignoring, those will be persisted on disk. Now let's add one, which is a dynamic property, just to see how that works. The user class is going to provide you with the avatar URL for the current user based on their name currently. We're gonna use this provided function called image URL for name, which basically calls the adorable avatars JSON API, uh, which is free to use and just gets back the URL of an image back to you so that you can show the avatar in the profile tab and all the avatars in the, in the fed list. So let's add a new dynamic property. Okay, so this new property, avatar URL, will give you back the URL for the profile image for the current user. Now, this one, so the avatar URL, it's not going to be persistent on disk by Realm because first of all, it's a dynamic property, but what Realm actually checks is if there's a setter defined for that property. And since this is a dynamic property, it does not have a setter implemented behind the scenes and therefore Realm will not even try to persist it. And so this is the way to provide some extra data into your data class without necessarily persisting it on disk. Okay, now, just as discussed in the slides, let's provide some meta information. The primary key for that user object is the name because the name with the side is gonna be the unique one. It's a good idea to maybe use some kind of ID, a numerical ID or an alphanumerical ID, doesn't really matter. In our case, uh, the username, the name of the user is gonna be unique. So uh, we're gonna define that as the primary key. Now I need to override the primary key method. This is the signature of the method and we have to return the name of the property we want to be the primary key. Now in this example, in this video, I'm using strings, string constants. Uh, you might wanna define those somewhere else, define static string properties on the user uh, class itself, whatever you want to make that more foolproof. In my demo, well, it's kind of easy, so I'm just gonna use a, a string literal like so. Okay, and that already tells Realm which one is your primary key. Whenever Realm uh, loads the user object class, it will check for a primary key method and by default primary key returns null. Uh, so there is no default primary key property for your, for your objects. Uh, when you wanna have one, you just uh, override that method and return the name of the property you want to uh, be the key. Now let's move on to adding a custom init. Uh, well, we have, as you, as you see, we have uh, several data properties Oftentimes it's better to have a convenient init in there that would initialize those in one go. So let's do that. Now we, want, we don't want to initialize sent uh, because new users usually will start with zero sent messages by default, makes sense. But we might wanna have a, a convenience init that will initialize the name. First of all, we need to call the default init because object inherits from NS object. So you gotta call self init as so, and then do your own initialization. And that's pretty much it. Everything I wanna do in my convenience init. You might wanna do more stuff, uh, less stuff. It's already, uh, it's solely up to you. You might not want to have a convenience init and always just create a new object and then uh, assign the name property completely up to you. We can quickly move to message.swift and do a little bit more of what seems to be very easy uh, coding for Realm object classes. I'm gonna add few properties in one go in that section. You don't need to have this, uh, you know, sections uh, per se. Uh, I just really look, love to separate 
all the parts of an object because there might be a lot of things going on in there. Okay, the message object has a few more properties than the user object. So let's have a look at them one by one. First of all, we have an ID. Now this time we have a real kind of like ID that uh, uniquely identifies the object and doesn't really carry any other information like the name for the user project. So what is this? Well, we say anytime a new instance of the message is created, the default value for the ID property is going to be a new UUID class and then taking the UUID string property out of that UUID. And that will generate a unique alphanumerical value for your message class. That will give you a unique primary key ID value by default. So you don't have to generate your unique IDs, you don't have to do anything extra to that. Message will be a string property. Uh, the default value is an empty string. Same goes for the name. Finally, we have uh, is favorite, which is a Boolean property. Uh, by default, messages are not your favorite. That's so we have false. False in here. And then the timestamp property is basically a new date object and taking the time interval since reference date. So this will give you the timestamp at the moment of creation of that object. And so you can see how you can already do quite powerful things by using default values for your Realm objects. First, we had a default unique ID generated at creation time for your primary key. And then we have here a default timestamp at the moment you're creating this object. So you don't have to uh, assign it yourself. Now, this already looks good. It looks similar to what we did already in user. But as you see, it's pretty easy. It's, uh, it's mostly uh, following a few simple rules, defining properties, adding methods and so forth. Now, uh, you need more things added to a message. You're going to need a custom init, just like we did for the user object. You will need some meta information provided by overriding realm objects methods uh, to say that ID is the primary key indeed you want. And you're going to add more indexes as well on that object and so forth and so forth. But you're going to do this in the challenges yourself. That's it for this video tutorial. And now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge for this video is to complete the message class uh, with some dynamic properties, with some uh, custom inlets, and some further convenience methods. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.